most people can develop the calmness of mind more easily because the environment and the setting are more conducive. If you diligently train yourself in whatever field of expertise, you can become skillful, just like playing badminton or any other games. After you have become very skillful, your strokes and movement on the badminton court will become like very graceful and you can decide where you want to return your shots or shuttlecock to. You want to serve low, it goes low and you want it to return to baseline, it will be able to do just that. It's like you have complete control over what you want to do on the court. Similarly, going to retreat to cultivate formal meditation is just like going to a very conducive place to train your mind. Like you go to a gym to train, to build up your physical, your body, exercise, etc. When you are skillful already, what happens? You do not come out to lie to test your skill, to compete with other people of different background and understanding. You may not know whether you have perfected your skill or not. So this part is very important. That's why end of the day, you have to come out to daily life to really test yourself and live life. That is why you need to go into life and interact with people. You must apply what you have learned and trained to by coming out into life. You must go for competition, but there is for games. What we are interested in now is about understanding life, the spiritual life. Spiritual life is to be lived. When you live life, you need to interact with people. Only then can you encounter all of the harsh reality that the Buddha spoke under his first noble truth teaching. There is the reality, the eight realities of life and existence, which is birth, old age, sickness and death. When you are with people whom you don't like, or when you cannot get what you want, when things don't go your way, or when there is separation between loved ones and things of possession that you hold on to dearly, like your wealth, your possession, your business, your career, your reputation, etc. Everything that you think you own. Only when your loved ones and prized possession starts to separate from you, can you check whether you really have the wisdom or not? Without the requisite Dhamma wisdom, you will be afflicted. Fear, worry, anxiety, insecurity, sorrow and lamentation leading to severe grief, misery, depression and sadness will arise in you. These are the tests. Otherwise, you can become gullible, sitting in the form of meditation, getting fantastic meditative experience. Then you equate it as, this is what jnana or what jhana are all about. And then you think you're already enlightened. But when you come out into life, and you can still be entangled with separation from loved ones and your prized possession, then you will realize that you still can be afflicted. You can still become emotional, angry, and sad. Then what type of enlightenment is that? So to stabilize the, the samadhi in daily life, you need a very stable mindfulness, daily mindfulness. That is why I always tell you all, when you are in a retreat or in a formal meditation, don't just sit without any understanding. Not much point. Do you understand? There are times to sit, to realize the cessation, which is Nibbana. You can also lie down during the formal meditation to understand clearly what is going on. You have to go deep into your consciousness, your awareness nature, and then just let things be and silent your mind. All this can be done, and formal meditation will help. But that training, 
while in the form of meditation, you cannot live life. But you do need some of the formal meditation training to go deep into the consciousness, means deep insight into our nature, so that the wisdom also can be developed. Because when it comes to cessation of form and mind, leading to the realization of Nibbana, it is a totally different understanding, and you need a form of meditation to go into it. Unless it is just only a glimpse or a momentary one in daily life, which can also happen. That is why the realization of sainthood is just one moment of pure cessation of consciousness. That is, form and mind can realize the glimpse of Nibbana. And it is an entire cessation of form and mind within that moment. 